Twitch. I'm One Moon Knight. You may know me, you may not. We're here with 2024's Skyrim Mod Load Order video. I did one back in 2023 and it was really popular, so I figured I'd come back with a bit of a newer load order. Some of the mods are the same, but ever since the constant updates from Bethesda and them messing with things when they really shouldn't be, uh, a lot of mods got lost. I can't access them, so I had to switch my load order around. And some of these mods may or may not be available to you on console, but to PC players you obviously have everything you could ever want or need when it comes to it. Us console players are just a little bit lacking, but maybe you'll find something here for you too. So stick around with me, and let's start right off with Skyrim's unofficial patch. Most of you know what this is, so I don't really need to go over it, but the next few mods aren't always used. I know a lot of people like Campfire, but this one here, Jobs, uh, it's one I've used for probably four, nearly five years now. It works super well. It kind of adds in a RPG-like feature from most MMOs when it comes to smithing. You can ask for just about any job. Even tavern jobs, woodworking, tan racking, uh, fucking smithing. Even just normal upgrading like on the grindstone or the workbench. The jobs actually pile up pretty high, even cooking jobs. So there's a lot that you can do and it really just adds in a roleplay kind of feature. Really good vibe. I enjoy it. I've got a few friends that have tried my load order. They enjoy the job system. Campfire. Most of you know what this is, but it adds in a complete overhaul to Skyrim with a camping system that even has skills as you progress further into it. I could never get too far into the skills though, but dear god it makes nights under the stars so much nicer in Skyrim. Not to mention it adds in a follower compatibility. So if you have mods like Inigo or Sophia, maybe Kaiden, you can have a much easier conversation with them. Adds in cooking utensils too. And water kegs for survival, so if you're playing a survival game this is definitely a must. Not to mention I like it a lot more than the Creation Club's camping mods. Next one is Simple Workaround Framework. This is what you're going to need for mods like Shields on Back, and it's just a utility mod that's kind of a necessity. Xbox really does get it shitty sometimes. We get shafted by the mods, but so many of you porters do your job and you go literally above and beyond and help us out. So I can't thank you guys enough for that. We literally wouldn't have a mod list without you guys. Just Shields on Back SE. I use Special Edition because Anniversary Edition breaks mods on console. PC players don't really need to know that one, but that's just for people who play Xbox or PlayStation and don't know. Although, PlayStation, you guys don't really get that good of mods, do ya? Still, you got a few gems on there. Magical College of Winterhold. A little scenery change and making a really dreary and dull place a little bit magical. No pun intended. XP32 Maximum Skeleton or XPMSSE. This is. It's basically the base template for most combat mods and like CBBE. Just any body mod in general, this fixes the skeleton, so you don't... <laughs> I don't even want to say you look like a slouched caveman, but uh, without this, it's definitely hard to get any good body mods. Definitely a must-have. Cheat room, you can use a lot more for than just cheating. It's helped me out of a few binds when I've been stuck in places because of Skyrim and Todd's fucking designs. I'll never forgive you, you curly-haired bastard, the amount of fucking progress I've lost before because of shit like that. Uh, and on to probably my favorite mod besides being able to play Skyrim with your friends, Skyrim together. I haven't gotten to even try it yet though. Conquest of Skyrim, allowing you to build your own faction, create an army. Conquer cities and villages. 
and it's probably the best mod in Skyrim, in my opinion. You know, it's subjective to what's the best mod in Skyrim. But this is definitely a runner-up, I'd have to say. Adds in a government system, and the voice acting got so much better since they started using the new AI. I, I really love this mod. I'm so glad it got brought to Xbox. Never expected it. Never saw it coming. Was really happy when it did, though. One of my favorite companions, Inigo. I'm sure everybody knows who this is. Even Todd mentions Inigo. <sighs> Best friend that you can have with you. Really fun story. It's... Honestly, I hope somebody makes like a fan animation, like a little series or a movie about him. Because Inigo really does deserve like a little show of his own. He's so cool. Serana Dialogue Add-on. This is like the newest version I could find for it. This completely overhauls Serana. No more asking for bloody tipped arrows and like three dialogue options. This is a complete overhaul making her a viable companion and fun to be around even after her story is over. You definitely have to try this out. I still haven't even gotten to fully access it because every time I go to play this damn game I always mess with my mods after I've set up the load order. I do something stupid. Game files get corrupted. I just have the worst luck. But the load order is fine. It's just because I keep changing mods mid-playthrough. It's my own fault. <sighs> Kaiden. This is the latest version of Kaiden. He's a, another custom-voiced follower with a beautiful story. I ain't gonna say a damn thing about his story, but he will be your best friend and <laughs> definitely the best bodyguard you can ask for. He is one tanky bastard and will knock down any competition coming your way. I don't even think giants can deal with his ass. He's gonna launch them to space instead. He is one strong motherfucker. Definitely rely on Kaiden in a fight. There's gonna be a few other mods tied to his and I'm might be missing one like there is another mod that was just as much space as him that i used to have in my load order but i can't find it anymore it's another one of those mods that went missing with the updates uh, there's a way to fix that actually if you go onto your phone and or, or computer and go log into the bethesda website go to their mods and then you can favorite things from there and it'll start appearing in your xbox load order it worked for one of my friends, but didn't work for me, so it might be subjective. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> so next up is Lucian, fully voiced follower. Like Kaiden and Inigo. They're all really good to have with you. He's a little bit more interesting than those two in one little regard. He becomes an apprentice later on, and it's just really exciting going over his whole story. I still haven't done the entire thing. You know, I've, I've gotten so close to doing all of their stories, but I swear to God, it's like my box keeps on telling me no as soon as I get close to the end. Still, I enjoyed traveling with them for all these years, and I'm going to keep on doing it. I wouldn't ask for better companions, and I don't think I can. Now this next one, Zav Bios Vanilla and Creation Club Overhaul. This is just an armor retexture it it's a really pretty one though like out of all the ones i've found over time this has become one of my favorites and so many of them are like 500 600 megabytes and just too fucking big i want to have fun not look at pretty armor all day so this one's only 199 megabytes trying to condense it on you gotta remember this covers all the vanilla armor and creation club so you know, it's subjective if you want to use it or not. But this is definitely a must-have in my load order and isn't going anywhere. Just like the next mod coming up, GDB's Elden Beast Edition. This is an animation overhaul of everything combat-related, and a little bit more than that. It goes over your immersive animations too, interactions, you name it. This is definitely the closest thing Xbox can have to PC-like combat. I couldn't ask for a better mod, and thank you GDB for being the badass talented animator you are for bringing this shit, cause dear fucking Christ we needed it. You are a godsend for making this. 
relationship dialogue overhaul. A must-have for all vanilla companions. It really... It breathes life into their characters. Even when there aren't many dialogue options, you can still hear way better lines than what vanilla was offering. I definitely couldn't have asked for a better mod than RDO. More to say? This is for pretty much all NPCs, and it breathes life into the game much like the mod before it. You'll definitely feel like you're in a real world space. You know, it modernizes Skyrim and keeps it up to date with most games on Xbox now. Cloaks of Skyrim, a classic. If you want to be a badass crusader or a caped vigilante or maybe you want a cloak to hide yourself for your next assassination, this is the way to go. Cloaks of Skyrim is a beautiful mod and adds in so many different capes. It even adds capes to the guards and faction-based cloaks. I really wish they had some hooded cloaks, though. Although you can get hoods in Skyrim already, so it's not a problem. The big fur coat. Uh, I can't really call it a coat. I say coat because I've been watching One Piece and Doflamingo's cloak reminds me so much of these cloaks. So they're really big fur capes. And they're thick as hell. Definitely made for like a bigger character. But they make some of the best warlord kind of play. I don't know how to explain it. You put on one of those cloaks and you feel like you're an emperor. Charging into battle or you're like an old warlord or maybe a bandit boss. You definitely feel like you're the chief when you're wearing one of these capes. This is probably my favorite flora overhaul, and it doesn't just do flora, it's all regions, so it covers snow as well. But this is Vedosebrum. I hope I didn't butcher that name. Vedosebrum regions. Good luck trying to find the rest. I recommend typing in his name right there, and you'll probably see it. I do recommend pausing my video at times. I do believe by the end of this video you'll be able to just on YouTube skip ahead and see every mod down the list as it goes and you'll be able to read it off. So you can skip me once it turns into a video. Don't worry, I won't mind. I understand completely. <laughs> so for the next part of the list, Skyland Nord Nordic Ruins. The Skyland is an older series for retextures, but it still holds up today. I like using it for specific things, so I don't grab their big packs that they have. They do have packs that cover everything, but I just wanted a few specific mods that I still kind of cling to. So this one, it's a beautiful overhaul despite being so big. The Nordic Ruins look really pretty. The etchings are clearer than ever. And... Oh man, the doors, they, they feel like massive Nordic Ruin doors. Like when you walk up to Bleak Falls for the first time, it's menacing. It feels really nice, and you can check out some of my playthroughs on my YouTube channel or on my Twitch and see for yourself just what Skyrim looks like for me. Now this one, uh, go up, damn it, my stick drift is getting the best of me. Simple character retexture bundle. This is probably one of the oldest ones I've used, but it actually covers a few mods within its pack. So it's just like a all-in-one. It's a quick grab and a quick fix for any problems, and actually does really good body mapping. The retextures on the hands, legs, feet, chest, everything. You will actually see body parts instead of Play-Doh, like old Skyrim has, because... Uh, <laughs> I played vanilla recently, and dear god, I don't think I can go back. It's not the same. The combat's fun. You know, the, the story is beautiful, but... Skyrim is an old game and definitely needs mods to keep up with the nowadays. Next up is Skyrim Wars, and this is the best version of the mod so far. They reduced the size from like 142 megabytes to 70. It's a complete overhaul of the Empire and Stormcloak factions. It'll basically place you in a whole new version of Tamriel. 
where Darth Vader is running things and the Empire's General Tullius. And, you know, surprisingly, Tullius makes a really good Vader. I didn't see it coming, but it's it's pretty cool. I've got a little series that I've been planning for a while and have been working on, but keep getting... <sighs> I keep getting screwed over by the mods, so it's going to take a while longer than I'd like, and I've already done like 20 different tries on it, but I'm going to keep going. <sighs> Little Star Wars and Skyrim never hurt nobody. So, Imperial units are going to be Stormtroopers. Stormcloaks are going to be Jedi. It's a really big war, and when you have mods that overhaul the Civil War, it's... Oh my god, it, it feels amazing. I can't even begin to explain the playthrough. It's definitely crazy. And to those of you who were watching my last mod loader video, you, uh, you probably already know what this experience is like. But now I've got a few different mods to kind of spice things up. So coming up next is a voiced follower I haven't gotten to use too much yet. Talked a little bit with them at the tavern, Bannered Mare. Got to know a little bit about them, so I'll be ready to interact with them by the time that little fan film comes around when I'm done working on it. But Light and Shade is really interesting. She makes for a perfect Sith Apprentice or Sith Acolyte, and it really goes well with the Star Wars playthrough. She's a really cool character, dark and mysterious, and much like Kaiden, has a lot to say. So, be sure to keep your ears open and ready. You don't want to miss a thing with her. Now, this is my favorite overhaul of Whiterun. You've seen this one probably in a lot of different... I want to say like 4K Skyrim videos. The over-the-top graphic overhaul videos that pushes Skyrim to the limits. This is Whiterun the City of Trees, probably the best overhaul for Whiterun you'll ever find. I will literally argue it to my grave. I haven't seen a better overhaul for the City of Whiterun than this. It makes it so beautiful. It, it literally makes it to where I just don't want to leave the city half the time. I could stand in there all day walking around. It was times like that I wish I could open up a portal and just walk right into Skyrim and stay there forever. If I had to be trapped in a city for the rest of my life by myself, I'd want it to be here. That's for damn sure. Now, Tamriel Reloaded. This tree mod adds in all forms of different life when it comes to trees, and you can kind of see it over here to the right. From maples to pines, cherry blossom. I don't... I'm gonna try to pronounce that. Let me fucking look. Cypress? Eh, uh, who gives a damn? Weeping trees, dead trees, but beyond that, it just really gives life to forests, because you know, the forests of Skyrim, while they're pretty at times, they're small. They're so small. It, it really makes things dense. You know, it, it feels like an actual forest that's been there for hundreds of years and isn't really touched by modern technology. It's a medieval fantasy land. You know, the most they actually have at the Imperial City is maybe fucking black powder weapons because I hate to break it to you guys, but ships have cannons that takes black powder. Boo hoo. They have guns in Skyrim. I just wish Bethesda actually worked it in. Another companion mod, and yeah, I've got a lot of fully voiced companions, I know. But uh, these custom voiced followers are probably some of my best friends when I'm not hanging out with my actual ones. Wait, he has friends? That's right, Jimmy, I do. I'm not just crazy. Ugh. But Song of the Green, or better known as Ari, is a Wood Elf follower that's kind of been exiled from her home. And she can't return. She's homesick. And I guess you could say it's kind of your job to cheer her up. But more than that, she's a badass archer. Very funny. And there's one thing all of these fully voiced companions and followers have in common. They talk with each other. Never again will you feel lonely on the road of Skyrim or get bored. Because these guys are constantly going to be making jokes with each other. Getting into fights. You name it. It's going to feel like you're actually in a... 
I don't even know how to put it. Take like a, a movie about D and D or like all those anime where you see fucking parties of people going into dungeons. You're gonna feel like you're right in the middle of it. It's gonna be nice. Think of it as your own story. Which Skyrim has always been that, but at the same time, it's just a normal game. And while you had fun during the vanilla, it, it was lonely. I bet. You didn't have anybody to travel along with you and make jokes with. But these guys, and ironically enough, you can call me crazy, but I've said shit like real life, not even paying attention to the game or asked myself a question. And I shit you not, these AI, these NPCs, they, they have responded to me. I have subtitles turned on, so even if I don't hear it, I see it on the fucking screen, and that shit, I've, <laughs> that spooked me a few times, but like I said, you will not be lonely on the road with these guys. And Ari is no exception. She's actually one of the most talkative out of the whole bunch, and has a lot of funny teasing with Lucian. The dialogue between those two is hilarious, and it's really adorable. I couldn't recommend a better set of mods than those followers. Mystic Aura Effects. This is going to change magic in a whole new way. It, it really makes it feel like you're a wizard. You're not just casting a flamethrower out of your hand until your magicka drains. No, you, you feel like you're casting fire. Real magical fire from your hands. It has impact. It actually feels like you're doing something with it. Now, the best way I can put it is when you cast a fireball or an ice spell, it's going to look pretty. It's going to look destructive. You're going to feel raw power like you've never felt before. I almost want to do my Palpatine impression, but... True, unlimited power! Now you will experience the true power of a mage. <laughs> Oh, wait, damn it, I'm in the wrong series. <laughs> Get out of here, Palpatine. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had to go chase out decrepit old man. Ugh. He, he likes to jump in with Kermit every now and again and fucking take over the show. You'll have to excuse them. The next mod is Bellyaches HD. This is an overhaul to <clears throat> pretty much all animals throughout the game. It makes them look like real creatures instead of a 2011 game. Mind you, the creatures in 2011 were really fucking cool, really nice, but this takes it a step further, makes them look like actual living creatures instead of just, you know, grayish, colorless Play-Doh. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but the creatures in Skyrim were really bland at times to look at. You know, you stare at them for too long or too hard and your eyes really start to hurt. That's the best way to put it. This adds in a little bit of color and realism behind them. You know, it, that's one thing I like about this load order is that it's really colorful. When you go into Skyrim, it's not bland and grayish anymore. You're going to see color like you've never seen before. Because we don't really have E and Bs or shaders on here, but what we do have are a few mods that are really nice for lighting. So, you add in a few mods that make the world a little colorful. And suddenly, Skyrim becomes one of the best games, even on Xbox. Even though we don't have all the same mods as PC, I'd like to think we're catching up a little bit. It's just gonna come down to one of these days when we somehow figure out how to hotwire our fucking PC to the Xbox and start streaming mods onto the Xbox from the PC. <laughs> That's when you guys better start worrying. But anyways, this covers bears, birds, the chorus, the chickens, the dogs, dragons, even DLC, dragonflies, elks, foxes, frostbite spiders, goats, cows, horkers, horses, mammoths, mudcrabs, rabbits, saber cats, skeevers, werewolves, and wolves. So with all that being covered, and most of them being very common, especially bears, Oof. I don't think they did bear... Oh, nope, yep, there it is, the first one. That's why I didn't remember off the top of my head. Uh, for, for reference, bears are my worst enemy. I run into them like every five steps through the woods, and they just don't like me for some reason. But nowadays, the feeling is very mutual. So this next mod, 
Pilgrim. It's an overhaul of the religion in Skyrim. You know, you can pretty much just walk up to any shrine, worship, and get the effects. There's not much to the religion in Skyrim. But with this mod, prayer actually means something. Following a Daedric Prince or an Aedra, it means something. You're not just aimlessly looking for a bonus in a video game anymore. You're now going to have something with meaning when you pray. It's going to give more than just status effects. It'll give debuffs depending on how you've been behaving. You know, if you're a goody two-shoes and you, you start out of nowhere <laughs> doing bad acts and you're not worshipping a Daedra, good luck. Your god ain't going to take too kindly to it. But there's a lot more to it than just that. It adds in all sorts of things to the game, and I don't want to spoil it. I'd rather you go in and figure out the adventure for yourself. That's why I'm trying to stay a little... Uh, I don't really have the word for it. I guess secretive with some of these mods. I'm not trying to say too much, but I also want you to get the idea what you're stepping into. Just know that... The gods in Skyrim are going to be a lot more active than ever before with this mod. Now this one, this is an overhaul for perks, and it's probably one of the best ones I've seen. It also does a little bit to your, uh, well, I'll let you figure all that out when you get into it, but you can kind of see what it all falls under right here. I don't even really have to say much, but, uh, Vokrenator? slash mysticism has probably been one of my favorite mods for a long time as it takes a few old perk mods mixes them together and it makes something really interesting you know i've never seen an overhaul quite like it but it's definitely the best take of the perk tree uh system and just i, I it, it's such a huge fucking mod i can't even begin to describe it it doesn't use Ordinator, or, well it kind of does, but it's it's a mix between Ordinator and Valkyrie. You, you can kind of see it right there in the name. So, have fun playing that interesting perk tree. I, I don't even know how to describe the characters you're going to have from that. You could make gods based off of this, and not even overpowered ones. That's the thing I like about this playthrough. No matter how strong you get, the enemies are going to get stronger with you and knock you down a peg. When you feel like God, you're going to be dealing with God killers. Dragon Priest Mass. Whether you love them or hate them, they're a must-have in the game if you want to get the final one. And some of them are really cool looking. Not the vanilla ones. Well, except for Konarik. But the three that come in the DLC, I really liked the look of them. And... Mar Marak's mask is pretty cool too. But they're so bland. I swear to fucking god, Bethesda, what was up with that? You make these badass masks and creatures, and then you hardly put any work into their AI as a boss fight. You hardly do anything for their background, and then when you kill them, they respawn. I thought I killed you. Go back to being Ash. I, I should be absorbing your soul like your dragon master. You should be done. Dead. I literally have your mask in my inventory. Go away. Get back in your coffin and go to sleep. Shoo. Oof. Either way, this is a beautiful, you could almost even say work of art of an overhaul for the mask. This, I don't want to say... It's the best overhaul for the Dragon Priest mask, but it's definitely one of them. It it really does a good job of working into the lore of the character when they made the mask. Like the effects are changed. It's not just the looks. I want to say that now. The masks are stronger than ever, and they're prettier than ever. You know, when you wear one of these, it really becomes a centerpiece to your character. You could make something really badass. Or really mysterious with one of these masks. And it goes really good with the cloak mod from before. So if you want like a, a rogue mage or a supervillain or maybe a masked hero and vigilante. This is definitely for you. 
Or if you want a supreme wizard that looks like an ancient lich, this is still very much for you. And when you get the Mask of Konarik, it looks like it's a demon. Swear to God, it's one of the coolest masks I've ever seen. The textures are beautiful too. No matter how close you get to the damn mask, it stays pretty. And that is so hard to do for animators and fucking designers. I, I can't even begin to think about how much work went into these masks. Definitely a must-have, and I'm glad that I managed to work the space out to get it back into my fucking load order. Better Vampires, a mod most of you I'm sure know if you like mods, which that's probably why you're here in the first place. Looking for an overhaul to just about everything, and that's exactly what my load order is. We're gonna be here for a while, so get comfy. I should have said that at the start. Get yourself a drink, maybe a snack. Kick up your feet and join me on the rest of this wild ride because it's more than just small touches. We we literally touched everything in the game and overhauled it. I couldn't stand playing base Skyrim anymore after playing it for years and I wanted a good adventure. And over time I built that really good adventure and I'm here to share it with all of you. So besides better vampires overhauling literally everything there is about vampires and making them real vampires from mythology and not the Bethesda... I don't even know what those guys were. They're like a... It's like Harkin said, a disease. They're not even real vampires. The next mod is Divine Texture Pack Trees. Now, you're probably wondering why I have multiple tree mods, and that's because they do work together. This one, it adds in like 2 to 4k textures, and sorry about bumping my mic. But, I have never seen trees look so pretty in my damn life. Like, these, these trees in game, it, it's basically, you, you could walk outside, and you'd still feel like you were in Skyrim. Because god damn it, these trees are fucking beautiful. Oh, I don't even know what to say. It's like literally, I could, it's like looking out of your window. The trees are real, god damn it, and it breathes life into the game like never before. When you go into a forest and you look up through the, the tree leaves and you see little rays of sunlight coming down, it feels like you're just walking outside under the woods. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's definitely magical. A lot more magical than the magic system in base Skyrim. <laughs> Speaking of base Skyrim, this is a must-have for anybody looking to do a little roleplay or actually have impact on their choices in the world. Skyrim reputation, it makes it to where when you do something bad, people are gonna know. They're gonna remember. You're gonna get judged on how you act. If you're a psychopath, people are gonna recognize that you're a psychopath. They're probably not gonna like you. It's actually more in-depth than just black and white, too. If you're somebody who stays in the gray, people notice that. And it... it oh my god, there's all sorts of status effects you get for it. The reputation system is really interesting. And it affects every part of your playthrough. Like, as you go through, you're going to feel like the hero of the world, or you're going to feel like it's villain. Or maybe an in-between. You know, if you like being the anti-hero, people are going to recognize you as one. It's really cool. I really don't know how I can explain this, and this is the... If you take a closer look... It says, the mysteriously fixed, patched, and improved version. This is one of the latest versions that came out on Xbox, and this is the one you're going to want. It fixes a lot of problems with the old one, and it, like it said, it's new and improved. And I don't think I could have asked for a better mod, plus, it actually got condensed down. It went from like 80 to 40 megabytes. So I would definitely get this version if you want to save space. And I've got just enough for updating. <laughs> Literally, I feel like if the mods get too big one day, it's just going to all collapse on me. Don't worry about me. I'm just sitting here holding up the world like Atlas. So we got medieval blended roads. I used to have dirt roads installed, but 
eventually they just... I don't know, they're nice, but at the same time, they're ugly if you look too long. A lot of the textures and meshes just do not look right. So with medieval blended roads, it really does change that the dirt roads are well fucking made. And like it says, they're well blended. <laughs> Feels like you're looking at 4K dirt. Never thought I'd have to say that in my life, but you know, this mod is definitely worth it. It... It adds a touch of beauty to the roads of Skyrim, which are luckluster and bland. Lackluster. Okay, there we go. My tongue likes to fucking speak faster than my mind sometimes. And I swear to God, one of these days I'm going to bite it off. Oof. So, real armies, civil war, it's an overhaul of the soldier system in Skyrim. Notice how when... The Stormcloaks and the Imperials clash, you only really see like two types of fighters. Or you might see people with the occasional fucking sword and shield, or somebody wielding a two-handed weapon and an archer. There's like maybe three types of fighters in the whole army. That's not how wars work. There's all sorts of fucking... <sighs> There's way more than just three units in a war, and this mod really does add different fucking classes and ranks for the soldiers. I I enjoy it. You're going to see things like legionaries, fucking different archers, veterans, battle mages, centurions. So, you know, you're going to see decorated officers and specialists. They might even have assassins. Who knows? And then there are the Stormcloak companions. It... it it all ties in together really well, and they even use the armor from the Star Wars mod. So at the end of the day, they're just different units in that same armor, and it all integrates really well for a really interesting playthrough. If you like the war aspect of Skyrim and thought it could really use something, a lot of these mods really do overhaul that. It makes the war feel like an actual war. And you know, it makes it a little bit longer and more interesting. Cloaks, face masks, and all sorts. This is a really fun mod. And this is the fans version. You're going to have to look for it for a little bit. I know I had to a few times, and hell, I know all these by heart. But this is one of my favorites. If you want to cover up your face when you have a hood, you know, to really give off that assassin vibe, and you don't like the Dark Brotherhood hoods, ugh, I hate that play on words. This is definitely the mod for you. You know, you can really... It's like the modular clothing system, but a lot less space. You can customize your hood however you want by adding a new mask, maybe an eye patch under it, or a headband. There's a lot that comes in with it. And a lot of different accessories, too. I really enjoy the mod. Hmm... <laughs> Multiple marriages for those who are looking to have more than one wife in Skyrim. Yada yada, you know exactly why you wanted this mod and you know who you are. I'm not going to say names. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's for the people who travel with more than one companion. And it adds in a few... It adds in a few features. It's... A lot of these mods are more than what they say they are. This one in particular. I definitely like it. Somebody worked really hard on making this. I'm good on them. You know, it really spices up Tamriel in general. Because I know a lot of the cultures in Tamriel have... <sighs> they have more than just one marriage going on. The cultures of Tamriel are very interesting. I actually like the Lord of the Game a lot. Elder Scrolls is really cool. It's just like Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Harry Potter. It's right up there with any of the big ones. I'd like to think you could learn things too and really get a different view on life just from learning about the lore in Elder Scrolls. Now, the Immersive Sounds Compendium is... It's a must-have. You're going to hear your armor clank when you walk. You're going to hear birds chirping in the morning. It really makes the game feel like real life. I, 
whenever you put on a headset and you get onto the game and you start moving around, it's like wearing a VR headset and a pair of headphones. You, you just feel like you're in the game. You don't even have to have a headset for it. It really... It does what it says it does. It's immersive sounds and you really do feel immersed. I enjoy it. I'd definitely give it a 10 out of 10. Daedric Light Armor. For those of you who really love Daedric Armor and were always bummed about it being a heavy armor type, this is for you. It fits any Sith Lord. It fits any Dark Lord for that matter. If you're looking to look a little edgy, it's right up your alley. But even then, it's, it's so cool. I wish I could show you pictures from right here. But this quickly became one of my favorite armor sets. And you don't even have to wear the helmet. I plan on throwing a dark hood over my head when I wear this badass suit of armor. It has a fold on the back, giving you a cloak-like feel without even wearing a cape. The armor is well detailed for 34 megabytes. And I'm sure it has a really high protection, considering it's Daedric armor. It's definitely worthy of any major warrior, and could definitely find its spot in your playthrough. Now, Elysee's Mega Mod Pack. Hope I said that right. This is for superpowers. Swear to God, you will definitely feel like you're playing on PC with this install. Look at all those abilities you get right over there. It's going to make your game feel like Devil May Cry, or maybe The Witcher, maybe even just an anime with how crazy some of these abilities get, but you're going to feel like you are him, or her. You'll definitely feel like the main character with this stuff, and the Dragonborn's already a god. I know way too much about the Dragonborn and their lore, and why Shore isn't there at uh, Sobbing Guard. Oh man, that shit's funny. Skyland, finally, another one of these mods. So this is another one of my nitpicks. This is Towns and Villages. And they're prettier than ever because of this. It's another mod that really just holds up to the nowaday. Couldn't see myself playing Skyrim without it. The wood looks real. The fur that, or well, the thatch that's put on the houses, you know, to keep that roof protected from rain. It, it's crisp. It looks well kept, it's colorful, a little darker and more vibrant. It doesn't look so bland and like plastic straw. The houses and villages, they look pretty. You know, when you conquer a village, you kind of feel bad that you're wrecking the place while you do it. They're beautiful areas to explore. Vampire Armor Expansion. I, for one, love vampires and am very much addicted. And this mod, oh man, it, it adds in, I want to say, a more knight-like apparel to the vampires. And while there are armors that have done that before, this is a really good one. It's more light armor based. I wish I could show you a picture. I... <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's like another Vampire Knight armor mod that most people have seen, but the hoods are really well done. You know, you <sighs> it it makes you feel like like a ring wraith from Lord of the Rings, cloaked in robes, but at the same time you're armored. And the hoods, they come over your head a lot farther than one of the other fucking Vampire Knight mods did. And I ch oh man, it, it adds in some really nice fashion designs for the vampires instead of their basic garbs. Because, you know, they only had two types of clothes and that was very boring. This adds in a few different outfits. Matter of fact, let's see just how many. So let's see here through the optional level list plugin that adds the items to the vampire level list usage by enemies in level 25 plus. So that's probably when you're going to start seeing them. Maybe even before then, but you know, most people don't go and mess with the vampires till like around level 15, 20. My goofy ass, because of alternate start mods, I, I sometimes start as a vampire. 
so I get to see that shit immediately. Ah, uh, here we go, another PC-like mod. Animated El Sopa Potions. If you ever wanted your game to feel like Dark Souls, this is for you. When you grab a potion from your inventory, no longer are you just... Ugh, 300 cheese wheels down my gullet in the middle of combat. <laughs> nope, no more of that. You no longer get to deep throat the bottle. You now have to drink the bottle, Dragonborn. Poof the boof, Dragonborn. And actually take your time. Don't just take a drag off that shit like it's a cigarette. You must poof the boof. But no, you'll literally in the middle of combat have to just like in Dark Souls run around like a goofball and drink your potions. Whether you love it or hate it, it's pretty funny to watch and it's very much immersive. I just wish they'd get the fucking placement of the bottle to the lips a bit better with some of these potions. Not only does it animate the potions, but I know you see that bottle right there in that picture. It completely overhauls the bottle design and makes them look more like a fantasy potion instead of just like a... A little glass bottle. Honestly, I'd ought to turn one of those potion bottles into a bong. Probably make for a good one. But no, what the potions remind me of in Skyrim were like really tall wine bottles at times. Or like a really old RPG. Like RuneScape. The, the minor potions, I mean. That's what those potions reminded me of. Like the potion icon from really old ass games. This next mod, and it's for loading screens. Take it or leave it because our loading screens are faster now, but TS Legends loading screens. This is definitely one of the best mods I've found for loading screens. The picture takes up the whole fucking screen. You get different tips and bits of lore that you wouldn't have ever seen in the base game. Like, the, the person who made this really did their homework, but also... They did a really amazing job of making nice quotes. I definitely couldn't play Skyrim without this mod. I actually struggle looking at those loading screens. They're so bland and boring. Sometimes they just make me fall asleep. The game used to make me fall asleep at random too when I'd play. I'd be playing one moment and the next thing you know I wake up and I'm in the middle of the street in Skyrim and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So if you want to keep your eyes transfixed to the screen and not doze off, this is definitely another good mod to have. It passes the time while you're going from door to door and location to location. Now, one of my favorite overhauls, Dragon Break. No longer are dragons just going to be stupid flying lizards. No, no, no. They're going to be dragons. Real dragons, you're going to get hit by the thum that is spoken about in this game and hyped up so much, but at the end of the day, only you and some fucking Draugr and one Dragonborn use it. Oh yeah, and the three in Sovngarde, woohoo. They're, they're, they're only there as much as you use them, honestly. <sighs> this not only overhauls their ability to use the thum, but... It changes their AI and their loot. You know, dragons are said to keep hordes of treasure in their bellies and in their caves. Well, guess what? This is the most realistic mod for dragons you're going to find. It has a compilation of dragon mods put together to make sure you feel like you're really fighting the terror of the past that started those dragon wars. You know... It, it makes you really feel like even though you're the dragonborn, dragons are a real threat. You know, it really feels like it takes you and you alone to take these fuckers on. Villagers can fight, but at the end of the day, they mostly die to these fuckers. They're strong. Like, really fucking strong. Even Kaiden struggles against fighting dragons nowadays. And another reason we have the cheat room mod is to make all companions... A.K. Kaiden, Lucian, Ori, Enigo, Immortal. Because we have mods like these that knock all of them down. And Lucian, he's not immortal, so he can die pretty easily. And it feels really shitty when you fail him. Because the whole point is to protect him. That's why he's there following you in the first place. So for me, it was just kind of personal. This next mod... I had to ditch one of my older mods that overhauled the Daedra of Oblivion and added in more. This is Elemental Golems. 
You're going to find golems all over Skyrim and be able to summon these gigantic fuckers. But this is probably the smallest and craziest compilation of monsters I've ever seen. These guys are huge bosses and it makes you feel like you're playing an MMO when you see them. But it also reminds you that while Skyrim is pretty, it's fucking terrifying. Oh my god, yeah, if I ever get born in Skyrim, I better hope to god I'm the dragonborn, cause fuck me, bro. I better have magic or something. The Elder Scrolls universe is hilariously terrifying. But it's also beautiful, and that's why many of us want to be a part of Skyrim, I'm sure. <laughs> if I could die and go to a different dimension, I'd want to go to Skyrim, honestly. The whole Elder Scrolls universe is awesome. Next mod, and you can call me questionable all you want, but Lady Marak, overhauling an arch enemy and somebody who really should have had more input and impact into the game. The first Dragonborn. The first Dragonborn. Who made a pact with Hermaeus Moore, and at the end of the day, he becomes a right off boss fight. A little power boost. Uh, a set of robes on your mannequin, and then bam, forgotten about. What this does is it overhauls that boss fight where you get a choice. You can either follow Hermaeus more like a puppet, or you can bend the will of Marak, rebel against Hermaeus Mora, and go through the coolest wave-based boss fight I have ever seen. As you fight through the hordes of Hermaeus Mora's minions, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's the coolest boss fight I've ever seen. From lurkers, to the seekers, to all the creatures you had fought prior, you and the first Dragonborn, the first and last Dragonborn teaming up together to fight off hordes of enemies and free themselves from that Daedric Prince, who honestly betrayed you from the get-go. When you go to the Scald Village and ask for the leader to read the book and give knowledge to Hermaeus Mora, what does he do? He... he Tentacle hentai's the shit out of that man. Like, tentacles come out of that book and stab that man through the skull. We... Nobody was ready for that. I don't think anybody was. You know, Hermaeus Mora told us to go and ask that man to give him knowledge. I, I figured, oh yeah, you know, he... He's just a god looking for knowledge. He might be eldritch and creepy, but surely he holds up to his deals. Oh yeah, he holds up to it like Clavicus fucking vile. Cause god damn, god damn, what he did to that man was vile. Either way, this really does add for a cool companion. A really interesting overhaul, and there's gonna be one more mod that comes with it that seals the deal for this. It's really nice. This is the body texture and overhaul of the character, and it, they did a really good job. You know, they breathed life into this character and made them interesting. So take it with a grain of salt, whether it's immersive or not. It's definitely a way better boss... It, it's a way better boss fight. I, I can't even try and fucking defend in any other way. Like, I have hundreds of reasons why this is a cool mod, but that boss fight is what sold it for me. I remember seeing it for the first time on YouTube, and I was like, damn, I wish I could go through that. Pines to Oaks. One more tree replacer, but probably my favorite. They're very realistic, probably just as real as the Divine Texture Pack for trees, and it adds these fuckers in everywhere, making the forest really dense. You know, it, it feels like nature has claimed the world when you walk under the trees. They're a really good eyesore. And they make for some really nice pictures, too. Sea of Spirits. The oceans of Skyrim are very lackluster. Very few creatures in the water besides slaughterfish. And what was recently added with the fishing overhaul. Thank you for that, Bethesda. That was really nice of you. A lot of us enjoy fishing. <laughs> and the whole internet went crazy for it when it came out. But this adds in whales and all sorts of different aquatic creatures. I couldn't play the game without it. It really makes swimming in Skyrim a little scary. You know, I, 
I wish I had a boat mod to go with all this, and I do have some ships here and there, and then the Creation Club ship mod, but I mean, I wish there was real ships in Skyrim. Gods, I can't wait to see what they do on PC for that. <sighs> Nordic beds. Most of you know what the beds in Skyrim look like. They don't look like beds at all. That's something I'd put a prisoner on, honestly. Trying to break my back and then don't get me started on the dwarven beds. How do you sleep on that shit? <clears throat> Nordic beds make beds look comfortable. Look like a real warm bed. I don't know how to explain this one either. But <sighs> some of these mods are just quality of life mods that really improve the nitpicks I had with the game. This was a big one. The beds looked fucking disgusting. Like the, the fur that was supposed to be your blanket looks like it should have just been the mattress because you slept on fucking straw and then the only beds that looked nice were the ones owned by like Jarls fucking only Jarls slept good nobody had enough money to sleep good apparently all sleep on straw <laughs> like what that ain't no bed that's like the fucking frame of a bed at best so that was definitely a must-have mod for me. And my next Skyland mod, the mountains. Mountains, Gandalf. I want to see mountains again. I love The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but no. If there's one thing I love in Skyrim, it's the mountains. Actually getting to see them, how big they are, and how pretty they are from afar. But then you get closer and closer in the base game, and they look like... Well, even far away, they look like pff, potato. Literal potato. This mod changes that. It makes them look like actual rocks. You know, you can see the cracks in the stone, the texture, all of it, the grain on... I I love this mod to death. You know, it, it does more than just breathe life into Skyrim. The life of the game was the mountains. You know, Skyrim is a mountain-based land with ranges and plains and forests. As far as the eye can see, the mountains are like the... Well, we'll just look at the throat of the world for the biggest example. That's the biggest mountain in Skyrim. And in the world. Which I thought was a really nice touch. Point being... It's a mountain-based land, and when the mountains look like Play-Doh and it's supposed to be like one of the main selling points of your province, that just can't do. That that was a much-needed overhaul in Skyland. You guys outdid yourselves. I can't believe this mod's only 19 megabytes. Most mods that overhaul like the textures of the land, they're usually like a few hundred megabytes. I'm talking the biggest I've seen like five to six hundred megabytes. You guys only took 19 megabytes and you outdid everybody. That's something beautiful if I've ever seen it. A quality world map. Some of you like paper maps. Some of you don't. I have mods that are good for exploration. But this was a must-have for me, because the map in vanilla Skyrim is dog water. Garbage, you can't even see roads on it. This changes that in another 19 megabyte mod. Definite must-have, but don't worry, I hardly use the map nowadays. You know, my eyes are my own map unless I'm really fucking lost like Zoro. And I've got other mods to help with exploration now. From compasses to journals and all sorts of shit. So you're going to find yourself barely using this map. But when you do have to open it, it's going to be a breath of fresh air. Because there are also better markers for the map too. That's another mod that's going to actually be a really nice assist to this. If you want to fast travel to your home in a city, you can. They're called pastel map markers or better map markers. There are a few mods like them. But the better map markers are the ones I like using. This quality world map adds in roads, you can see the water trails, there's smoke, you can see Red Mountain and Harkin's Castle. It all looks really pretty. You know, it's basically like you're a drone hovering over Skyrim and looking at the whole damn province. Thum SE. This is a mod that makes you feel like a god. When you use the Thum, you're going to feel like the Dragonborn of Legend. 
It adds in word walls all over the place. And not actual word walls, as you might think, but instead it places the words of power throughout Skyrim in the most <sighs> minuscule places. Like, you could honestly miss these things. They're everywhere. Anywhere you explore, you're going to learn new shouts as you go. You won't even be trying to look for them half the time. They'll just be popping up like it's fate. You'll be stumbling across that shit and you'll go, ooh, a piece of candy. And trust me, it's a piece of candy worth getting. Now, Kukatsuo, hope I said that right. Thane Weapon Replacer. I'm sure all of you are tired and damn well pissed with the Thane weapons. You help out a city. You, it's mainly just for getting houses, honestly. You do, you do everything because you're a completionist or a collector. Or you maybe you just want a quick enchantment. Not anymore. These are their own weapons now, and they come with really nice effects. One of my favorite weapons is from Falkreath, or I think it, no, it was Morthal. Yeah, no, Falkreef gives you, like, this int very interesting kukri, or kukri. I, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the blade. Either way, the kukri knife, it's a really big blade. It, it's a really interesting-looking sword. Not even a knife. Like, it's based around the design of a kukri. It's a curved knife design, but it, it is huge. It is, like, the size of a machete. That's from Falkreef. The blade from Morthal is a naginata. You know, if you ever wanted to be Whitebeard in Skyrim, or maybe a Asian warrior of some kind, this is definitely the weapon pack for you. It has more than that, though. It's got weapons of all kinds, and you'll definitely feel like you earned something when you did those quests. It's not just a piece of garbage anymore. You now have a weapon worth your time. And in 18 megabytes, no less. Luminescence, a lighting overhaul for Skyrim. I love this mod. Only 16 megabytes, but uh, oh my god, it is definitely the closest thing we have to you PC fuckers. Your guys' lighting is a... It's insane. Like, beyond real. It's like you guys plugged yourselves up to the Unreal Engine and just went ham. This definitely adds in horror, beauty... And it just improves the scenery to anywhere you go in Skyrim. When you're in a tavern, it feels like a, a somewhat well-lit tavern, but a little dark at the same time, as medieval taverns were, giving off that tavern vibe that you see in movies. The best way to describe it is it's like you're walking in a movie the whole time you play. Enhanced Blood Texture is one of the oldest mods in Skyrim, but still a must-have for anybody. 15 megabytes big. It, they've really outdone themselves over time, condensing it. <laughs> you want to see blood spray on your screen? This is the mod for you. You want to see actual blood on the ground? This is the mod for you. Instead of whatever the hell Bethesda had going on, it, this is literally the perfect mod for realism. It can get a little messy, but it's definitely a must-have. Aethernautics. This is a mod for the Star Wars playthrough in general. To those of you who just enjoy immersion, probably not for you, but Dwemer were really fucking cracked when it came to technology, so I wouldn't put a fucking spaceship past them. Aethernautics is a dungeon slash player base. You, from the inside, get a ship working, like, piece by piece as you go through it and repair. And fucking turn it back on. And it becomes more than just a spaceship. You can travel and leave Nern and go to two different planets, but besides that, you're gonna be able to call down airstrikes and do all sorts of crazy shit with this vehicle. I love it to death, and it's definitely going to be a very... F oh, I can't wait to have this as a gag in my fan film. Honestly, the more I talk about it and think about it, the more I wish I could have got it done the first time and not had to fucking retry it 15 different times. And yet, here I am still trying to do it. The next mod after is Amazing Follower Tweaks. I've used this mod forever. You want to customize the armor of your companion, but they're fucking stingy and don't want to put on anything else. Well, guess what? You can access their direct inventory with this. 
train them how to use spells, have multiple followers. It's a perfect mod. And you can see the limit right there, five followers at a time. Or if, say you have like fully voiced followers, you can have way more than five. I've had like nine people traveling at a time. And even then, we're still not very overpowered, but uh, it's fun. Definitely fun. It makes you feel like you're in Lord of the Rings and you've got the Fellowship of the Ring with you. You know, or like you're in a big party or a guild in MMO. This mod right here really makes the skies pop. Natural Clouds. Probably one of the best cloud mods I've found. You know, they've got all sorts of different mods with all sorts of different names. But every time I look into the sky and I see... <sighs> bright sunny skies with beautiful clouds or clouds that form designs I've never even seen in the sky like it, it really makes you feel as if you're in a fantasy world it's otherworldly you look up in that sky and the color and the hues when the sunsets go it, it makes me understand why Naruto's favorite color is orange I've never seen prettier skies with this mod installed. And then here it is, Lady Marak. This is the Marak follower. So if you see over here, there it goes Marak follower and Lady Marak, with Marak follower going under Lady Marak. But uh, each one of these mods is going to help overhaul the character and implement the features and the boss fights. Which is wave based, by the way. You're going to not just fight one wave of enemies, it's going to be a few, and then some big fight with Hermaeus Moore at the end. My memory's patchy on it. It's been like a year or two since I've seen that video. But oh my god, it is one crazy ass adventure. <laughs> the Reliquary, or Reliquary of Myth Artifact Overhaul. This is for all the artifacts in Skyrim. If you ever feel like enchantments or special weapons and artifacts were lackluster, this is definitely the mod for you. It makes your weapon feel like a real weapon of power. When you smack somebody with a sword enchanted by flames, it's not just going to set them on fire. It's going to do exactly what a sword that's enchanted with magic fire should have done. It's going to hurt like hell. But more than that, it it's going to give artifacts a different kind of vibe than what you're used to. Instead of just being like the base vanilla game and only doing like one thing or being you know really boring, it's going to feel like the weapon it was supposed to be from lore. Take the Ebony Blade for example. It's said that when you kill somebody with it, they'll be smiling at you and, you know, you won't get caught by the guards for killing somebody with a weapon that's supposed to make it to where you can't get caught. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. That's what this mod is for, and it's really awesome. It changes up those enchantments, much like Summer Mist, but specifically for artifacts. Which, you know, Summer Mist didn't cover the artifacts in the game. This is the banter patch for Ori and Inigo. It's one of the few mods you're going to need to get things working. Desert Pyromancer. This is for any companion you might be bringing with you that you want to look like a Sith Assassin. Or Mage. Or Sorceress. Basically, this is the mod you want when you want to have a Saj Ventress in your game. It's like a Sith Acolyte. It's good for any playthrough, though. It's a really awesome armor set. Not much I can say about it. You'd have to see it in-game yourself, honestly. It gives like a... Well, exactly what it says. It gives off a desert vibe. You know, it could be just about anything. More than just a pyromancer's outfit. Assassin, belly dancer. You name it. Honestly, sky's the limit with outfits like that. This next overhaul is for dialogue. It's the bandit lines. It's going to make being a bandit a lot more enjoyable for those of you like role-playing as one. <clears throat> but more than that, it's going to breathe life into the other bandits. Give them background, because bandits aren't just bad people. 
Inigo proved that, and a lot of other people did too. There are a lot of cool followers that were bandits, but it's people that were on hard times and casted away by society. I don't know, it gives them an interesting sob story and background. You feel like you're dealing with real people and not just AI. You know, the old must have been the wind when I have an arrow sticking out of my forehead. Next mod is uh, bandoliers, bags, and pouches. And this is the probably smallest version of it. Definitely condensed. <laughs> I fucking love this mod though. If you're tired of being stuck to like the vanilla carry weight and only being able to level it up through stamina or you know have increased carry weight through enchantments then this is for you it adds in really cool looks to your character armors you know it's like the modular clothing system it adds in one more little feature to your fashion you'll be able to have extra pouches and even armor from this so the carry weight's a nice bonus but it it's really for fashion i swear to god they look so nice when they're attached to your armor sets. And if you find the right fucking set for things, say you might want like a book on your side for a journal, vials of potions, you can have all of that with this. The mod is really cool. Next is Magicka Sabers. Can't have a Star Wars playthrough without lightsabers. Need I say more to that? Dwarven Power Armor. This is going to be something very special, a little artifact hidden away. But say you're a fan of, I don't know, Fallout, maybe Warhammer, Bioshock, any game that had power armor. This is going to be for you. And it's really cool how they did this. I don't want to say a damn thing about it. You'll have to find out for yourself. Go live out your Fallout dreams in this bad boy and go clob a few heads for me. So, lockpicking interface, this overhauls it and makes it look really pretty. But I can't use my old hack that I used to uh, have to open lockpicks up instantly. So on vanilla designs, they have this little scratch in the lockpick. And you, you can see it. It's like a little white glint on the steel. And almost every time if you bring your lockpick over to that, it'll open up whatever chest you're trying to open. This, however, while it's really pretty, I don't think they have that little glint, so good luck to those of you who knew about it like me. We're going to have a way harder time opening up chests now, but dear God, it's going to look so much pretty. Like, so much nicer. I <clears throat> Pardon my tongue and my dialect right now. I woke up not that long ago and my head's still a little, a little foggy. That's the best way to put it. Summer Mist Enchantments, most of you know what this is, overhauling pretty much every enchantment in the game except for the artifacts, and adding in a shit ton of new ones. I couldn't play the game without this. The enchantments are nice in Skyrim, but so boring, and only have like one use specifically. You know, beyond like Fire, Frost, and just a few support types, they didn't have much. The coolest thing you could make for, like, an enchanted weapon was a Stallroom Sword because it had fucking frost and something else going through it. Oh, no, wait, I remember what it was. So you would add fire and lightning, and then the fucking Stallroom would have frost naturally on the ice. That's why people loved using Stallroom weapons, because you could make those types of enchantments on them, have three elements at once. This is a must-have mod. Use those blankets. Ever wonder why people always lay on their beds but never use the damn blanket? Well, no longer. People are going to actually look like they're sleeping in Skyrim now. There's not much to say about it, but definitely a must-have if you're an immersion freak like me or just anyone else in the community. Whew, immersive carriages. Just one more mod that really does add some quality of life changes. This will take you pretty much anywhere. Towns, villages, cities. Maybe some landmarks around the world. Ask some questions. You know, get to know your carriage driver. After all, they've been here for so many years with you. Might as well. 
It really does make the carriage ride a bit more interesting. Now, this next one... This one's for Arvac. This is the better Arvac armored variant. It makes him look like the horse of a death knight. You feel like one of the horsemen of the apocalypse once you've got an Arvac set up. He's a cool horse in vanilla, but let's be honest, he could have definitely had more done to his design, or at least a saddle given to him, because dear god, I don't want to bear back all day long. That's rough on my character and rough on the skeletal horse. Not that he can feel anything, mind you, he's all bones. Alternate start live. Or, not <laughs> live, no, live. Live another life. This mod, as old as it is, is still definitely a must-have. I couldn't play the game without it. Mainly because if I sit through that carriage ride one more time without it being required for my playthrough, I, I'm gonna bash my head into the wall, bro. That vanilla start... While it's cool the first hundred times, by the hundred and first time, you're just done with it. You don't want to sit there anymore. You're off making some food in the fucking kitchen while that shit goes on. This, this mod, it does way more than any mod I've seen for alternate starts. There are a few mods that are interesting, even one that lets you be like a person at Helgen watching the execution. But this is... Definitely for anybody who plays D&D &D or just role-playing games in general. You can make a real character. Your own character with this. And it still ties into the Dragonborn story if you want it to. More line expansions. This is for Civil War. It's a must-have for anybody who goes through the boring... Boring ass campaign that is the civil war now i i love wars in video games and i love story games that focus down on wars and the struggle of the land was like one of the biggest pulls for skyrim's story but man it hardly feels like there's anything going on in that war and the skirmishes that's what they feel like not even battles not a fight it doesn't feel like a war but the thing that bugs me the most, and it's just like the... In any Bethesda game, when it came down to soldiers, you never felt the horrors of war or the struggle behind it. It was always, can't wait to get another one of Ulfric's boys. They sounded like bloodthirsty savages and less like people. This breathes humanity into the characters. You're going to hear constant stories being swapped between soldiers of both kinds it i don't know it makes the soldiers of skyrim on both sides feel a lot more humane and it really speaks a lot about their cause and why they're fighting you know there are a few characters that are really interesting when you talk to them throughout the game and the family members that they lose to the war really really shows the impact that it's had on the characters and Skyrim, making it feel like a real world. You know, that's the biggest thing for Skyrim, is how immersive the world actually is on its own. You know, you'll definitely feel like you're stuck in it for life sometimes. Next mod, and I was talking about it earlier, this is something that has to do with the map, but this is sensible travel, exploration, and navigation. This gives you a compass, map, a journal, and a few other gadgets to mess with, but it also, it works on the horses too. It's a really nice overhaul for how small it is, but you'll definitely feel like an actual adventurer or just explorer while you navigate. Not just the forests, but the caves and crypts. The whole world of Skyrim is big and vast. And you're going to be charting things down on these cool gadgets and maps. I couldn't play the game without this mod, and I've barely touched the surface of it. Sensible interface, and this is the updated version that's playable on the new uh, fucking Skyrim update. It doesn't fuck with your menu, and it gives you all the best features that any HUD could ever give. Not only does it mess with your HUD, but it does a lot. 
Like, I, I mean a lot. Using the Nordic UI as the base for this mod. Sensible interface gives you Dark Souls like hotkeys where you can press a button on your D-pad and instantly switch to a weapon or spell that you slotted there. And they've got a few slot combinations that you can use, so you'll be fine for a while. Other thing it does is it makes you use the left bumper. The left bumper is no longer running. Left stick is. Left bumper is how you access each one of your inventories. Whether it's magic menu, skills, or your inventory, you're going to have a lot to do. So left bumper A is your map. Left bumper B is your magic. Left bumper X is your inventory. Left bumper RB, which is just the right bumper, that's going to open up your skills, but left bumper and Y is your favorites menu. And from in there, you can select what you want to slot. So just click on your D-pad, and while you're hovering over that item, spell, or whatever, it's going to select it and save it to that slot. And when you back out, you can right in the middle of combat, quick switch. Just like you're playing Dark Souls. It saved my ass more than a few times in the middle of combat. Okay, this is my CBBE mod. It's a preset called Nordic Feel. It's small, but it's pretty. You know, that's the best way to put it. It makes the bodies of Skyrim's women look real. You know, it feels like you're actually looking at a person and not just like a created character in a game because the skin to the character models in Skyrim it it looked like a cheap plastic at times with how shiny it was like if you were to look at a character's chin without a beard that shit would glisten off in the fucking sunlight and it was pretty funny with this it makes skin smooth and while skin's supposed to refract light, it, it makes it look like a bloom and not like a fucking mirror reflecting light back into your eyes. It, it's very pretty. That's the best way to put it. Here we go. For those of you that enjoy a orc playthrough and still want to be a samurai or just really want to look like a badass warrior, the antique orcish armor and weapons overhaul this is a standalone and it is awesome I've seen it a few times in my playthrough on orcs and it definitely looks a lot cooler than the other fucking orcish armors you know this 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 is like the elite of the village or the chief this is definitely the armor of any leader any great warrior any rogue Hell, even a non-orc would feel badass wearing this. This is the vile art of necromancy. If you want to feel like somebody from HP Lovecraft, like you've got the Necronomicon in your hands and you feel like a real badass necromancer or the king of worms, this is the mod for you. More draconic dragon aspect. This is the red variant. And I enjoy this because it... While the blue and orange designed dragon aspect is really nice, I'd like to think that for each dragonborn their dragon aspect was different. But not just that, it also works for a Sith's playthrough. And if you've overhauled the dragon aspect a little bit, it's... <laughs> it's a menacing look. It... <sighs> It makes you look more like what the dragon aspect should have been. Like a real humanoid dragon. Think like a, a dragonborn species from any other game. How they were half human and half dragon. It definitely makes you look like you're an all-powerful fucking dragonborn. Okay, here we go. Gemling Queen Jewelry. Or... As I like to call it, one really over-the-top mod for the jewelry of Skyrim. This is some 2K, maybe 4K textures. And it's really small for what it does, but all the base jewelry in Skyrim besides Nordic looks really fucking ugly. You can't argue it with me. They could have definitely done a better job on the gems. And the circlets holding those gems and the rings. And so what this does is it makes jewelry look pretty. 
you know, it's something that's a real eye-catcher on your character and won't be missed when they see it. When anybody sees it, it'll, it'll make you feel like a noble or a really well-endowed adventurer. Somebody who's been around the block for a while and has some money in their pocket. And it'll definitely make more sense when Brynjolf goes, Hmm, you didn't do an honest day's work for all that money you're carrying, eh, lad? When he fucking sees you literally glittering with gems from head to toe. That would make more sense than the cheap iron rings that we all wear, or the steel rings, my bad. This next mod is Dwarven Colossus, and while the mod is small, the model is well detailed. And he is a terrifying boss to fight, making Dwarven Ruins a much more dangerous aspect when you go adventuring. And it makes those boring ass places just that much more exciting. Which is very hard to do considering most people get fucking bored to death when they explore them. I don't get bored too much in them, but dear fucking god, there are times where I'm just wandering around there for ages because, you know, Bethesda doesn't do a good job with quest markers. So I get lost, and I get pissed. Next mod, Imperious Races of Skyrim. Overhauling all the races and making them a bit more accurate to lore, and having an impact on what you're choosing. You know, you're not just going to be the well-rounded anything you want to be as any race. Races have different things they're good and bad at, and this applies. This is definitely a mod for immersion, but it's also a really cool gameplay changer. I mean, just look at this first one for the Altmer. You're not going to have 100 health, but you're going to have high magicka. Maybe not the highest stamina, but take a look. The stats are still very nice. It's for people looking for a harder, yet more balanced out playthrough. The Helios Protector. This is another overhaul mod for dialogue and outfits. This is... Oh, man. This is a really cool mod. It... It shows all sorts of features, but what it really does is just, I don't know. One minute you could play dress up with people, tell them what outfits to wear, and the next you're having really in-depth conversations. It adds in a couple of dialogue options besides that, but it also changes some NPCs. Take a look. Like Freya, you can now marry her from the Dragonborn DLC, and she has more to say. So like a lot of my other mods, it's a dialogue overhaul. But it does a little bit more than just overhaul their lines. I need food, water, and drink. Or, well, food, water, and sleep, I'm pretty sure. This is the continued version, and probably the latest one. Don't know if they have one that's newer than this. I use it all the time because I hate Skyrim survival mod from Creation Club. It's absolute garbage. Get this instead. You'll enjoy yourself a lot more. Fendrick's magic evolved, adding in a few hundred spells and really, really spicing up combat for not just you but enemies too. You're going to be terrified when you fight mages now and you're going to feel really well rewarded when you go through a chest. Darker Brotherhood V2. This overhauls the fucking Dark Brotherhood, making them a true assassin's guild and making them badass and to be feared. If you wanted to be a real assassin, this is for you. And it does a few things, but I'm not going to say anything on that. Dapper Deliveries, a overhaul mod for our favorite boy, the Courier. Love this damn thing. It overhauls his clothes and just... It's such a good mod. I do recommend trying it. I'm not going to talk too much about it. You'll have to see him for yourself. But either way, this is definitely a must-have for those who think the courier is just a little too bland. Immersive Citizens AI Overhaul. No longer are people going to be walking into walls and being stupid. They're actually going to use the paths that Bethesda set out. But not just that, they're going to have paths of their own now. And they're going to go from town to town, village to village, city to city. They'll roam wherever they want to. They don't care now. It's free game. The AI do what they want. It's a badass mod and I can't play the game without it. 
immersive projectiles from spears, oil pots, and smoke bombs. This is the mod for you, adding in all forms of medieval weaponry that people tend to forget about. Even a common bandit can be the most dangerous person in the room when given one of these weapons. I'm not kidding. They have grenades, too. You light the wick, throw the bomb, and suddenly your dragonborn is flung into space like a giant just hit you with its fucking club point blank. Good luck trying to survive in the hell that is Skyrim when even bandits are your worst nightmare. This is for any masochist like me and just people who enjoy a little bit of uh, explosions. Maybe a uh, bit of spear throwing, axes, knives. If you want to be the black swordsman like Guts and throw knives at people in the middle of combat, this is for you. Lord's Mail with Sleeves. This is an overhaul for a creation club armor. If you don't have it, you don't need it. But this makes it black and gold and look really nice and pretty. It's... A more dark and mysterious design, and honestly, I don't like the uh, original design of the Lord's Mail. This looks a lot cooler. It's personal preference, but I think most of you would probably agree with me when you see it. Next mod is called Lawless. This is the light version, and I think it's the only version you can find on Xbox, but it adds in different classes for the bandits, making a bandit playthrough all the more enjoyable when you go to Sackett City. Or... A lot more difficult when you go to fight them. And there's a scaling system, so good luck finding the bosses and all the people around. I, I enjoy this so much. It's definitely one of the coolest mods on Skyrim. Pirates wield scurvy cutlasses. For all the sailormen of the sea, this mod's for you. And definitely for me as I'm obsessed with pirates. The cutlasses are a really nice touch to all the bandits of Skyrim that were actually supposed to be pirates. Then there's Abyssal Wind Magic. Do you want to feel like a Jedi or a Force user? This is the mod for you. Or do you want to feel like a master level Wind Mage? Do you want to feel like you're from Black Clover and you're Yuno? This is literally your mod. This one, it's for all the Khajiit. And even Argonians, like any beast race, this is for you. You're going to really enjoy it. It's just a really adorable mod. Your ears actually show in your hood. There are different races for a reason. So when you wear clothes, it's going to look different. A human and a Khajiit aren't going to have the same design in their hood when they throw it up. The ears are definitely going to be there. And I just like this. It's a little feature. Definitely a quality of life change. Just a little nitpick. Personal thing. But I think you'll enjoy the mod all the same. <laughs> Lore-friendly guns of Skyrim. You can argue it with me all day, but they did a, an amazing job of implementing this into the game. It's through all the categories of smithing, from steel all the way up to Daedric, and you can find them on any enemy from the fucking get-go. You can add them to the leveled list from level 1, or have it implemented a bit more fairly. I find it to be very fair, because enemies will have guns no matter where you go. They'll have any type of weapon no matter where you go, what level you are. That's the fairest thing to me. If you can kill them, good on you. You earned it. But good luck trying to keep the ammo up for those things. It's all black powder and special magic bullets that you can find. Which is another thing. They've got all sorts of technology in Skyrim. You really think they didn't have guns? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Royal Armory. This is for the new artifacts. But it's... It's not just new artifacts. It's mainly for people like Ulfric and Tullius and the Jarls. This is their weapons. It's called Royal Armory for a reason. And when you see a king wielding a greatsword, it's not going to be some normal steel greatsword. When Balgroof wields a sword, it's going to be a sword meant for him. Or when Ulfric picks up his axe or lightsaber, it's going to be like, uh-oh, he's dual wielding weapons, get the fuck out of here. Either way, artifacts are going to look really cool. The royal ones, I do mean. And they're on display in some cases. Like in Solitude, you could fucking rob them of the sword that's right above the throne if you want it for yourself. 
Mm, this one, very important. No vampire lord appearance change. I can't not play the game without this. It used to be for me that I just overhauled the look of the vampire lord, but then I realized you look so much cooler when you're in your own armor floating there. Not to mention, uh, Bethesda, how did you not get copyrighted by Underworld for literally ripping off their vampire lord design? I just gotta know how you guys got away with that one. There's a whole ass movie series that did that design before you guys, and I'm baffled. So, opulent outfits for the necromancers. And this is probably the coolest robe design you're going to see for any necromancer. It's a silk robe with beautiful silver trimming. It can have hoods or come without it. If you're a mage, or if you want something casual to wear that's dark and mysterious, a little edgy, but really nice and regal, this is for you. You'll be the talk of the town, or the talk of, say, the court. You walk into the Jarl's court, you'll definitely be an eye-catcher with something like this. Or if you take pictures of your character, everyone's going to be jealous of your outfit. It's a really pretty robe. Aurora Standing Stones. The standing stones are so basic and boring in base Skyrim, but with this, it feels like... It feels like what they should have been. Something that people are born under. Special powers that you're granted. The abilities are really nice, and they'll be there with you for your whole playthrough. You won't want to get rid of one once you've chosen the one for you. And it can really help for making a character background. Definitely good for stories. Definitely good for playing. Either way, it was a really good mod. This next one is an amazing mod, the Notice Board. Adding an adventure guild-like vibe to Skyrim. And just, you know, it, it helps flying around with news, quests, messages. It adds in another depth of lore to the game. You know, it's like a mail system almost, and a news system. It's how people stay up to date. You know, they didn't have newspapers, but instead they have these boards that you can go and check. I love using this. It's a good way to make money, too, in the game. It makes life a little bit easier in Skyrim, and it gives you no end to the quest, whether you say that's a good or bad thing. It can be a bit of both sometimes. Vampire Lines, another overhaul, making vampires feel like ancient creatures. Dark and mysterious. Vampires will feel like true terrors of the night. And they'll feel cocky, overconfident, but at the same time wise and powerful. You'll definitely tell when a vampire is new or old to the scene. And they'll know when you're a vampire, too. They'll make fun of you. Oh, they don't care. They talk a lot of smack. It, it definitely... It enhances combat. You know, it adds in a little bit of flavor. And it's like fighting Count Dooku in Star Wars. Having somebody constantly talk to you while you fight. And not just say the same thing, but actually feel like you're having a conversation with your enemy. You know, it conveys emotion and I really enjoy that in games when the AI feel real this one is for Ori and Kaiden it's another banter patch another one you're going to need if you want them to talk with each other constantly this one is strongholds more Kazgore I'm pretty sure it does a really big overhaul for a whole little lot of space like almost no space at all Probably one of the coolest overhauls to any fort I've seen, or stronghold. Only two megabytes, and a very big overhaul for any orc character's playthrough. I definitely couldn't play the game without it. Next one is Mythical Ages Weather Preset. This is the closest thing to an E and B we're going to get, or shader. It changes the lighting of your screen, and just the game in general. You have a lot of choices. There are a lot of presets. I prefer fantasy for my preset. 
it makes the game really colorful and it makes it pop. You know, when you look at sunsets and colors, it's... Oh, it's so pretty. If they were to make a mod with just the fantasy preset or like a fantasy shader from this thing, I would immediately go download it. This one is another Reliquary of Myth mod, or Reliquary. This is for Sunder and Wraithguard. It overhauls and fixes those, motherfuckser, those motherfuckers. The hammer and the gauntlet are now actually viable in early, mid, and late game because of this mod. You know, they feel like they're the tools from lore that were forging weapons from the heart of Lorecon. When you wield that weapon and that gauntlet, you feel like a powerhouse. That's the best way to describe it. Coin pouch retexture. This just turns the cloth of the coin pouches black. I didn't like the old brown and dusty look. This is just another personal preference, but I think it looks really nice. Up to you if you want it or not. Violins, a kill move mod. This is a must have for anybody who wants to spice up combat and see cool ass kill animations. True Lords of Oblivion, overhauling their artifacts and the way they act in general. You're going to feel like the Daedric Princes that you serve under have more of an effect in your life than before. You know, it's just a really good mod for the artifacts, but also really good mod for the Daedric Lords in general. Big Leap, this is the three times jump. This is for Jedis and Sith alike, or anybody who might be superhuman. And for those of you who are tired of jumping like maybe two feet off the ground and having to fucking climb all over Skyrim, I really do feel bad for you guys. This mod's for you. Weapon Trails, adding in one more modern feature from combat and games. Weapon Trails, add in that little line, that little trail, that little stream of air when you slice through it. It really does impact combat, especially for lightsabers. It makes you feel like a real Sith or Jedi when you swing that damn thing around. When you clash weapons, it's the coolest thing ever. When the weapon hits, you see that trail come across your enemy. And you feel like a master swordsman. Definitely a must-have mod, albeit small. Dovahkiin can lean, sit, or rest, and chill anywhere. This is a very fun mod, very, very lore-friendly, and definitely a quality-of-life mod, because Bethesda apparently added in all these markers for the NPCs, but didn't let you have any? Like, what? How are you going to do that in a role-playing game? Why can't I fucking lean on the wall and be a badass in the corner like that guy, huh? Why Why does why does fucking Brynjolf and everybody else in the Thieves' Guild get to lean against the tavern wall but me, hmm? Why can't I sit on the ground and chill with everybody? Why are my legs eternally stuck standing? Speaking of that, 360 degree walk and run. You can actually turn around in game now and not have your camera follow you everywhere. This is one of my favorite mods and it's the closest thing we'll get to movement on PC. I just wish we had a camera mod to go with it. And while we do have camera mods, it's nowhere near as good as what PC has. I don't know what mod lets that camera follow you guys around like that. Wish we had one though. This is Hearthfire Multiple Adoptions, and it's so you can have more than just two kids, because you know there are a lot of kids with very sad backstories in Skyrim, and I've got a soft spot for them. I feel so bad for them sometimes. It's hard not to want to adopt a few of them. I always adopted Sophie and, uh... <sighs> Lucia. Or I think it was Lucia. It's been a few years since I last got to play my uh, game like all the way through and get to points like that, but those were basically my two adopted daughters anytime I'd play the game because they had some of the most heartbreaking backstories. And mind you, one of them was living on the streets in a city with a murderer on the loose, so dear fucking god. I'd never thought I'd say it, but parental instincts like kicked in on overdrive, and I swear to god every time I go there I beat the shit out of that dude. So, Vibrant Weapons Light, 
this is an overhaul for the enchantments. Basically just the elemental effects. When you swing a sword that's supposed to be enchanted with fire, it's going to have actual fire coming out of the blade. Lightning crackling around it, energy pulsating through it. It's a must-have for anybody who wants to feel like an elemental warrior. Or just a battle mage badass. This is a mod for you for sure. Really pretty colors, whole lot of destruction. Vampire Knights. Not an armor overhaul, but a faction overhaul. Adding in knights throughout Skyrim that are all vampires. Dark Paladins looking to cause trouble and protect their orders. They're scattered everywhere. As simple cabins to caves, crypts, castles. Be careful during the night. You never know when you may run into one. They're tough challenges. And they're definitely packed to the brim with good loot if you can kill them. Me, I like to try and recruit them, although that's a harder process in and of itself. JK's Morthal. Best Morthal overhaul I ever saw. Definitely gonna need a new gen console or like a good PC to fucking have that mod installed as small as it is. It makes Morthal a city worth hanging around in. You know, it makes it more than just a village or a town. It's one of the big cities, one of the holds, but it feels like a shitty little swamp village whenever you walk in there in base game. Not anymore. It has a wall. It has a gate. It looks like an amazing town from an anime. Like, that, that's the best way to describe it. You know those isekai anime when they first come into a village and all the sights and fucking signs and buildings look so pretty? Well, yeah, that's Morthal now. Kind of surprising, honestly, but it looks like a beautiful Viking village. Talkative dragons. Something I wish was already a feature in Skyrim. You know, dragons talked, sure, but it was maybe a word or here every now and again. Now it feels like you're talking to something ancient. A real eldritch creature, a fantasy dragon. Some... Some gigantic lizard that's a few hundred years old you'd think would be packed to the brim with wisdom and would probably be talkative, especially after being asleep for so many years. Well, this aims to fix all the problems that Todd left behind. Now dragons have personalities and they're terrifying and hilarious. Ah, the pirates who don't do anything. You know those people who kind of sit out in the solitude docks and literally just sit in their ship all day? Well, there are a few quests tied to them now, and you can get that ship for yourself and become a pirate. Have fun with that knowledge. If you want to get this mod, be a pirate and a sailor, it's for you. Run for your lives, another classic and old mod. The Run for your lives mod overhauls the villager AI, and it basically has their instincts kick in high gear and uh, they decide to preserve their lives instead of throwing themselves at dragons and creatures of all kind. When an attack happens in the city, they'll go running. They're not going to take a butter knife to a dragon anymore. They know better. Let the guards deal with it. Run away. Hide. Get in a rock. Do something. Just don't throw yourself into the mouth of the dragon. That's my job. Better dead thralls. Another mod to help you feel like a really badass necromancer. And it lets you customize what your thralls can wear. You know, it's what necromancy should have been. Being able to make actual constructs that are undead and armor them up and feel like... <laughs> it, it makes you feel like you're really... A master necromancer, not only experimenting and making new creatures, but you're also... I want to say you're a bit more experienced than most. Not only are you going to make undead creatures, but much like a character from One Piece named Dr. Hogback, you're going to be making them the best creatures that you can be. Adding in all sorts of different equipment and parts. And this just really aims to make you feel like a real necromancer. It also increases the level cap of your dead thralls and does a few things to spells that really should have been in the base game. I mean, look at all those features right there, that whole list. Good luck, because there's a lot to this mod, as small as it is. 
character creation overhaul. This is a mod for anybody who misses Oblivion's character creation. And that's all I'm going to say. If you didn't play Oblivion, well, tough titties. I guess you're just going to have to find out what this does. Royal Bloodlines. This is a patch mod, I'm pretty sure, and it's supposed to help with a few things. Let me take a look really quickly. Yeah, it's Royal Bloodlines and Better Vampires compatibility. I thought so. So this is True Currency Overhaul. It adds in basically your typical anime or RPG system for currency. Bronze, silver, and gold. Bronze is worth one piece, silver is worth ten, and gold is worth a hundred pieces. That's one piece per worth, by the way. So one bronze is one piece, one silver piece is ten bronze, and one gold piece is a hundred bronze. The Royal Bloodlines uh, compatibility patch with better vampires. Those two mods are really interesting, but definitely get this patch so they work. The male underwear replacer. I know you're all tired of wearing the goddamn adult diaper, the the fur fucking thong. The I, I have so many words for those goddamn medieval undies. I want nothing to do with them. Instead, medieval boxers. Much better for any male who doesn't want to wear a thong. Level 1 Loot Adder. This adds in all your modded fucking weapons and pretty much everything else that's so cool that you want to see at the start of the game. This is the level 1 Loot Adder version, so you will see things at the start of the game instead of it just being scripted into the leveled list over time. Nope, everything from the get-go. And to be honest, that's a lot funner than having to wait around. All armor lootable and wearable. Must have mod for anybody looking to get that extra armor that they damn well earned. Say you kill a Daedric? Anything. What was the one thing they did to you? They dropped maybe an ingot, a heart, or a random weapon, or maybe a random piece of their armor. Not anymore. Now you get to completely snatch what they wore. Draugr? They drop a full set of their armor. Daedra? Full set of their armor if you're lucky. Forsworn, all their stuff. Everybody drops their stuff. You will not be missing anything that you earned with this mod installed. So it's a must-have for me. The Vile Art of Necromancy. This is a patch. And it fixes a missing recipe. So definitely going to need this if you want to do everything with that previous mod. Runic Mage Armor. So this is a flesh spell overhaul. Adding in... I guess you could say Nordic runes. To uh, your ebony, iron, and oak flesh spells. Either way, it, it looks a lot cooler than the base game's flesh spells. The way the runes glide over the armor and clothes are so much cooler. You just feel like an old ancient mage. You know, your spells actually feel like they're magical. Hunter Cabin of Riverwood. This is a must-have mod for anybody. I, for one, love Riverwood and how pretty it is, how calm and serene it is. It's sort of... I want to say it's disassociated with pretty much everything hidden away in its little forest. And it's got a perfect starting area for a base right next to it with that mine. Uh, for any Conquest of Skyrim players, you know that you need mines in that game to do anything. But other than that, it's just a really beautiful area and it's one of my favorite places in Skyrim to hang out. So I always get this mod and have a little house there. Plus it's got a cool quest tied to it, which I'll let you figure out for yourself. Here it is, the useful map markers. So this is what adds in extra map markers to cities and other locations. Definitely a must-have. It won't just be homes, but special locations too. Maybe like the College of Winterhold or your Vasker. The Blue Palace, for example. Anywhere that wasn't located in the city before, you'll most likely find now. You know, it 
does a good job of condensing them and not making them too sporadic and not adding too many. Demon's Path adds in a shit ton of spells to make you feel a lot more powerful and well it's just for a fun time really. It's for anybody who's looking to be a dark mage. Not to mention it comes with a few cool enchantments and some weapons here and there. I like it. Pretty fun mod. Enhanced NPC perks. Must have if you want the NPCs of Skyrim to be stronger or your followers in general. Guards Armor Replacer. This is one of the smaller ones and it... It adds in all sorts of custom sets. But they all use like vanilla meshes and textures. So depending on what you have installed for an armor overhaul mod, the armors can look really cool. It's a must have if you don't want to see the basic guard armor though. Mind you, I like the guard armor of Skyrim. I, I think it's the funniest meme ever, but this is just, oh, it's so much better. <laughs> so Vera's female skeleton. This is a must have for any CBBE mod. And while we have XP32 Maximum Skeleton, this is basically, think of like an assist mod for that mod. Like the little cherry on top. It's what you're going to need for any of the CBE mods. I like it. Looks really good. Makes the body mapping look realistic. The skeleton's very realistic. Couldn't play the game without it, honestly, because uh, it makes the females in the game look real. It's pretty cool. Perks from questing. Ever done a quest that felt boring as shit and didn't give a good fucking reward later on? This is another mod that you're gonna need. Perks from questing give you all sorts of special effects and passive abilities that stay with you forever once you complete the quest. And they're based off of the quest, meaning it's not just gonna be a random bonus, but it's gonna have something to do with the quest you just got done doing. So have fun figuring out what kind of a character you're going to be after all those quests. Like I said, you can become a god through all these mods. Lunar Fury. It's a complete overhaul for the werewolves. Very fun. While I do like vampires, I love fighting werewolves, and this is just for anybody who likes playing a werewolf. I try to do the best of both worlds, so you're welcome. Blood and Alchemy, a uh, vampire overhaul to, well, not just alchemy, but potions in general. This mod is very fucking cool. You can craft potions of blood with it. You can make all sorts of different poisons and newer potions. It's got compatibility with most mods. It's not hard to install. And it works well with other vampire mods, too. So definitely something to put into your playthrough if you're a vampire, like me. Amazing Follower Tweaks. No Friendly Spell Damage Add-on. This is for those of you mages that are a little too destructive for your own good and accidentally aggro your teammates on you. Don't have to worry about that anymore. Palicious Poison Block, or Palicus. Maybe it's Polycus. I, I want to say it's Poly... Ah, fuck it. Fuck it. Somebody correct me in the comments, but Poison Block. Ever been spat at by a spider on legendary difficulty and you watch your character shoot into the air like a rocket because of one little spit of poison? No? Well, I sure have. This mod is for those of you who prefer to fight with melee no matter what enemy you're fighting. This is something that'll protect you from poison just by simply blocking. It's not going to save your ass completely, but it's better than dropping like a fly. More blood and gore. For those of you who like modern combat and games and enjoy gore, this is definitely for you. The gore is a must-have, the blood looks nice, and it works very well with enhanced blood textures. So don't worry about compatibility, it's perfect. Better gold. If you take a look over there, the quest that would usually give shit amounts of gold? Way more now. That's all it's for. 
It's just to make jobs pay a little better. Wear multiple rings. That one is kind of self-explanatory. No longer are you forced to wear one ring. Although I don't think it'll show the rings on your fingers, sadly. But hey, at least you can wear multiple rings now. Realistic wildlife behaviors. No longer are animals just going to attack you for simply existing. You're going to have to get into their faces for that to happen. Battle wards. Love this mod. You can add wards to your weapons now. Dynamic camera. This is the closest thing we have to PC cameras. Adjusting our camera angles. Say off the shoulder third person for combat. As a big example, you can even change your uh, field of view. I usually change it from the 80 to a uh, whopping 100. Sometimes 90, just depends on how I'm feeling. Queen of the Damned, Deadlier Serana. This is a very fun mod, and it overhauls how Serana acts in the game. Not her dialogue, but her combat. So it's a must-have mod, and it works very well with the dialogue add-on. So don't worry about that. You're gonna fucking love this mod, I promise you. Better Skies works with natural clouds, and it makes the sky so pretty at night or day. So this is a part of the Big Mod series. This is more kill moves and decapitations. Must have for you gore lovers. Dirt Cheap Magic. No longer is your magic going to be draining at like two seconds while your shitty flame spell or lightning spell is just fucking bathing your enemy and it doing like five to nine damage. Nope, none of that now. Now you're going to be able to cast spells and have true unlimited power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn it, didn't I tell you to get out of here? Uh-oh. Anyways, with Palpatine aside, in spooning, this is the dominant version for those who want to be the big spoon. You know, it's just... It's not just for the player. It's for NPCs, too. Amulets of the Nine. This overhauls all the amulets effects in Skyrim, making them viable throughout any part of your playthrough, and sometimes they become an integral part of your character. Tending to be the best necklaces in the games with enchantments, you're not even going to want to make a necklace with these things around. Blood Skull Blade and Dawnbreaker. This is a beautiful overhaul mod, and very small for what it does. I love how condensed mods have become, but the fact that it's only 8.8 .8 kilobytes is amazing. True Vampire Lord. What it does is basically make the Vampire Lord form viable in all parts. I do mean all parts of Skyrim, all the way down to the latest playthrough. Like, it doesn't matter what level you are, you're going to be able to hop into this form and kick anybody's ass. Vampire Lords keep their armor. Another mod that you're going to need. It goes right along with Vampire Lord No Appearance Change. Skills increase stats. Just another mod that helps progression system. Like, honestly, Skyrim's progression system was too linear. Way too linear. It... I don't know. The legendary effect for skills and perk trees was nice and allowed you to level indefinitely. But at some point, you just felt like you were too weak and enemies were too spongy. Or at some point you decided to start breaking the game the way Bethesda intended and you became God and just started killing everything with a fork. <laughs> so, you know, this adds in a bit more balance, not just to you, but to everything. Visible favorited gear. For those of you who want to look like an actual adventurer with equipment on their back instead of just your normal sandbox avatar or character walking around with like the bare minimum hardly looking like they're a adventurer but the moment they fucking pull something out of their pocket it's a rocket launcher. No longer will you look like you have a rocket launcher shoved up your ass. Instead your greatsword's going to be on your back and you're going to reach for it. Your weapons are going to be on your sides. You're going to reach for them. 
so on and so forth. It's for anybody looking for a bit more immersion to their character design. This one is more personally for me, but I enjoyed this feature in Assassin's Creed games. You, you know, you're a leader of, like, the Dark Brotherhood, but you hardly have anybody backing you up. You're the leader of pretty much every faction in Skyrim, but you never have bodyguards that are always there coming around like Shadowmere. This changes that, giving you a small team of assassins that come randomly to help you in combat. And only in combat. So, have fun with that. <laughs> If you missed that feature too, this is definitely a mod for you. I wish more games did it, honestly. Realistic conversations. Why not stay and chat a while? That's basically the whole point of this mod. Like in Oblivion. I wish it zoomed the camera into people's faces and, you know, made for a really good cinematic movie quality like camera angles, but no. What it does is it makes it feel like you're actually holding a conversation with the person. They're looking at you, they stay focused, they're not trying to walk away like in Fallout when you talk to Preston. <sighs> Definitely a must-have mod. 20 PCT more perk points. So what this does is every five levels it's going to give you two perk points. Making leveling a little bit easier, a little funner, you know you're gonna have a little bit more room to work with when you're making a build. It's just something necessary for progression, and a lot of people like the mod already, so I definitely had to have it in my load order too. Makes the game just that all much more fun. Dynamic Combat, a necessity for anybody using the GDB Elden Beast mod, or anything in that series for that matter. Dynamic Combat is the framework that gives you all your cool animations, and what it does is allows you to use the X button in the middle of your combos to carry them. So even if you were just playing with vanilla combat, you could click the X button and hold it in the middle of combat out of nowhere and do some crazy combos. Agonistic Combat. It truly is agony, but I couldn't play the game without this. It does so many fucking things for how small it is. But... Oh my god, you're gonna hate yourself when you play with this mod. Remember when I said I got launched into the air by one spit of poison from a frostbite spider? Yeah, this is the mod that makes that possible. That level of pain. Everything happens because of this mod right here. But as you can see just from like a few features right here, this, this mod is fucking crazy. resistance changes, enemy changes, arrow changes, depending on how far or how fast they're going. This mod does a lot. You know, it makes the game brutal and unforgiving. Makes it feel like what combat should have been. When you fight creatures that are eldritch in nature, you really feel like you're fighting something that shouldn't be real. Fantasy-like creatures. Makes you feel like you're in the next crazy game that hasn't come out yet. It definitely makes it feel like Dark Souls. That's for sure. It holds true to its name, it's agonistic combat, but honestly the combat feels so rewarding when you get used to it. Wondrous Wards. Overhauling the ward system, making them cost a little bit less. And making them look nicer, too. They're going to act a bit more like shields. They're also going to block more spell damage. So they're going to be a lot more practical in combat. Definitely a must-have mod for any mage. Rich Merchants of Skyrim, self-explanatory. No longer you're going to have to constantly go from merchant to merchant because somebody didn't have enough money. Royal Bloodlines, so here we go. The load order goes better vampires, royal bloodlines, and then this patch going down. So the Parthenax Dilemma, a mod that everyone needs, and if you try and argue that one with me, I'm going to slap you silly. End of story. 
Sekiro Combat S. This one is for the player. It doesn't affect all NPCs. The one that does... Uh, whenever you block or an AI were to block your attack, sparks fly. So, you can imagine how laggy it gets when everybody who blocks has sparks fly. For performance and making sure your console doesn't melt, I recommend getting the one that's just for yourself. It's beautiful, and the only time it really matters is when you're the one fighting. Sparks fly from lightsabers, and it looks pretty when it does. Proper aiming. This is for anybody using a camera overhauling mod or just tired of your arrows missing in general. Definitely a must-have mod for any archer. Elven ears for Bretons and NPCs in general. This is a must-have mod for anybody looking for a more anime or fantasy-like feel to the Bretons because they're half-elves, they're not just humans. They've got more going on to them than meets the eye, and they should look like it. I really like this mod. Really nice quality of life feature, and it's honestly something that I'm pretty sure was in lore. I don't know why the Bretons don't have elven ears. Somebody please tell me honestly. This is just a really nice mod, and I couldn't play my game without it. But, that's all 170 mods, so thank you all for staying with me for this long-ass ride. It took a minute. And I'm definitely going to need something to drink after this. But I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I'm One Moon Knight, and I'm signing out. Goodbye, everybody.